and welcome to a special edition of Living Pro-Life. I'm Brian Westbrook, and we are so blessed and honored to be on site here at Grace Church here in Maryland Heights for Drive-In 2021. And so it is so, it is so great to be here during Drive-In 21. We are going to have so many people out with a great evening and a great dinner to celebrate life and to mourn the death of those who have been lost to abortion. Today, our guest on Living Pro-Life is Brad Baumgarten. He first started as a sidewalk counselor for the Coalition for Life, and then came back to the Coalition for Life to be our director of community events. In fact, he is the one planning Drive-In 2021. And so today on Living Pro-Life, we're gonna talk about the role of men, and men who get pushed to the sidelines and told that they don't matter. Yeah, men who have a role a role in the abortion debate. They're told that their opinion doesn't matter. What they say doesn't matter. But we're here to say that men, we must stand up for life. And yes, I heard that both men and women, male and female babies, die through abortion. And we must stand up and protect the women who are lied to. They're lied to in these abortion facilities. And so today we're gonna celebrate life, but also call to those men men who should stand up for life and ultimately see an end to abortion here in our great country. So today, please welcome Brad Baumgarten. This is Living Pro-Life. Hello and welcome to Living Pro-Life. I'm Brian Westbrook and I'm so honored to have Mr. Brad Baumgarten with us today. We're going to talk about what it means to be a man, what it means uh, to own our masculinity, and how we can together build a culture of life and ultimately end abortion here in our community. Brad, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. It's great to be here. Well, I'm just so honored to have you on the program today. Uh, we've been longtime friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you were one of the very first sidewalk counselors we brought out to the sidewalk. Uh, right, right. Uh, you took a chance on me. I took a chance on <laughs> you and yep. said, well, let's do this. Let's That's let's. right. And so uh, you have uh, a vision or you have a... a history with the pro-life movement, but specifically with the Coalition for Life that a lot of other people don't have. Mm. And so tell me about the Coalition for Life you first joined mm -hmm. and, and what it is today and, and how is your own personal journey? Wow. All right. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, thank you so much, first and foremost, for being here. It's great. And obviously, it's great to catch up and see you. Um, but I remember just the first time going out there for 40 Days for Life, out there on the sidewalk. And it was just kind of a weird experience for me because I just remember that I was praying out there and um, my, my heart was just getting so full, so full of love and mercy. And the Lord was just showing me a really good, a good avenue to pursue. Um, especially with my, my own masculinity to be out there, to stand for something. And I just remember when I filled out my information, I got a, a phone call from uh, one of your one of your first employees, like way back when. Way back, yeah. My goodness. And she goes, hey, Brad, I met you on the sidewalk. You seem like a really great guy. What do you think about becoming a sidewalk counselor? And I go, ah, I don't know. I, I'm not much of the counselor type. But um, yeah, I, I had a great experience out there. So let's let's try it out. Let's just see what happens. So um, have you always been pro-life? <laughs> em embarrassing to admit, I was not. I mean, when I was younger, I got swept up in the culture. Um, admittedly so. I was just kind of starting to understand like who I was as a person and I just wanted people to like me and the agreeable <laughs> well I mean yeah <laughs> yeah and I don't know I just wanted to be able to be more agreeable with people and 
that was just the thing. Just, you know, you're pro-choice, right? Like, don't you want to be there for, for the woman? I mean, don't you want to be there to help the, the woman? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, for sure. My mind never thought about, like, the child inside. Um, and then I went to, went to college, and then I was thinking to myself, Lord, I want to be a man for, for you. And I read this book, and it was great. And it said um, three things. You know, to order to find the masculine soul, you need to have a battle to fight, an adventure to live, and a uh, beauty to save. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Lord, what is the adventure you want me to live? And next thing you know, bam, there I was there at the sidewalk. And it has been an incredible adventure. Um, the more that I was out there, the more strength I got into my own views, and the more I realized that the beauty of the human being, the beauty of the child, and that we really need to be with them both. What can you say to those who say, well, this is only a woman's issue. This is only a woman can talk about this because she has a uterus and you don't. I don't, and, nope. And um, that, this is what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what can you say to those who say, this is only a woman's issue and men just need to sit on the sidelines. It's not, not for them to talk about or even be involved in. What would you say for them? Mm. First and foremost, um, it takes two to tango, you know? And when you, when you procreate like that, you are, one, you're responsible for that life. And two, as you know, fatherhood is such a gift. It is incredible. And to, to own that and to appreciate that and to love that. And so as being a man, um, I hope one day to be a father and with being a father and caring about my children I should most definitely care about all all children and that's that fatherhood instinct that you have as as a man um, and so I would say just as much as anybody else that you have a say in the issue um, because one, it is, uh, it's an opinion that you can have, and it's true that, you know, it takes two to tango. And, you know, number two, it's like your own fatherhood that you want to portray and take care of others is a strong point of masculinity in my mindset. So, yeah, I, I think that's, um, that's a really important thing for people to realize. Just do not be afraid. And just to say, it can really express your fatherhood in talking about the issue. Right now, our culture, you know, many people in our, our culture today, are, yeah. they all think we're going all in the wrong direction. And yeah. I might be in that, <laughs> in that group. But, <laughs> you know, today, it just seems like our entire country is just being torn apart from every single direction that mm. we can think of. Uh, fewer people going to church, uh, fewer people getting baptized and married, and more divorces than we've ever seen before. And in fact, even birth rates are yeah. way down. And so it, it seems like the country is falling apart from the inside, but um, what is it that we need to do next? Where do you see the next steps in the pro-life movement? And just us as a country, where, mm. where should we be focusing our time? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I think that the culture right now is trying to tear down true masculinity, but I think they're doing that because they do not know what true masculinity is. I feel that the culture has a sense of what they think it is, but in reality, our faith uh, teaches us that of what our, our true masculinity is. So I don't think the problem is that we're, as, as men, that we are, um, uh, that we are over, overdoing our masculinity is that we're not doing it enough. To really say, this is what it is to be a man. This is what it is to stand up for our, our convictions. This is what it means to be a protector, to be a provider. 
and to continue to um, continue to show others how we are improving in that identity. And I think that once people in our culture see good, honorable, respectable, dignified men, then they may say, wow, I want to be like that guy, right? Like, I hoped one day to be that person. Um, and then just be unwavering in that, be confident in that. Uh, and one way to do that and an avenue to be able to show that confidence is to stand up for something you believe in, in the, in the pro-life movement, and to continue to drive that home. You've talked a lot about masculinity yeah. and uh, what it means to be a man. And so how would you define that as, um, as what we need to do as men today? What does it mean to be masculine in this culture right now? Mm. Yeah, that's that's a really good question. I've I've really thought about that a lot, and I, I think for one thing that we need to do is, of course, is we need to pray, pray about it, right? Because what praying does is it lets the Lord kind of speak to our hearts and speak to our souls, and with that, we are giving giving our own self up to the will of God. And I think that's uh, one thing to get to understand. Another thing too, I think is really important to be a uh, to be a protector. I feel like the Lord made men to be physically larger than women, and to be able to show that in the proper ways and the proper in the, in the proper situations. You know, if there's somebody out there who's just getting bullied or destroyed and stand up for that kid, stand up for that person, right? In the same way to take that and stand up for the unborn. So to be, to be a protector. And then also, I think it's really important to, uh, to be a provider, right? And what does that look like? What are you providing? You can provide strength for, for someone else. Um, you can, provide like understanding un un knowledge for someone and or you know as i say a provider you can also provide like gifts time talent and treasure sure. for someone else um and, and those those are all really really good things definitely but i think that as far as being a man that you need to be confident in all that confident in where you are in your life, confident in your faith, um, confident in where, uh, what God's calling you, and that confidence can really open up these, these doors of, of masculinity for yeah. yourself. So thank you very much, Brad, for uh, being on the program today. It was mm. an honor. Yeah, no, thank you, Brian. This is, it was great to have this conversation with you, and it was incredible being able to, to be here and to kind of dig a little bit deeper into uh, the pro-life issue. So it was fun. It was really fun. Very good, very good. And uh, also, thank you to everyone who's watching today. Uh, this was Living Pro-Life. We'll see you next time.